وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى in this episode I want to point out the way in which Islam looked at women's education and women learning. As you know, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in the hadith that the women are like the men and nisa ushaqaikh rijal. And so I want to talk about how women are like men in the knowledge and ilm in Islam. The first one, inshallah ta'ala, is when it comes to attaining knowledge, Islam pushes, encourages that women learn and they gain knowledge and they carry that knowledge. Al-Imam uh, Al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in the Sahih, min hadith Abi Huraira, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an ayah came down on him, which is, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ حين أنزل عليه وأنذر عشيرك عشيرتك الأقربين. When this ayah came down, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he gathered his people together because the ayah is saying وأنذر وون محمد عشيرتك your family الأقربين those who are closest to you. And so the Prophet he gathered them all together and he said to them the following. He said يا معشر قريش اشتروا أنفسكم من الله لا أغني عنكم من الله شيئا. O oh, the people of Quraysh. Sell your souls to Allah. Do righteous actions. لا أغني عنكم من الله شيئاً. I can't do anything for you, the Prophet said. يا بني عبد المطلب. The offspring and the progeny of عبد المطلب. لا أغني عنكم من الله شيئاً. I can't help you. I can't do anything for you. Exert effort and work hard. يا عباس بن عبد المطلب. The Prophet brought his uncle now. He started from Quraysh and then he went to Abdul Muttalib and then now he came to his uncle Abbas. He said, Ya Abbas, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, La ugni anka min Allahi shay'a. I can't do anything for you. Then the Prophet said, Ya Safiyyatu, Ammata Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La ugni anki min Allahi shay'a. Safiyya, who is his auntie, he said to her, I can't help you. I can't do anything for you, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Ya Fatima tu binta Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salini bima shi'ti la ugni anki min Allahi shay'a. Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my daughter, salini bima shi'ti, ask me whatever you want. Now, la ugni anki min Allahi shay'a. But the day of judgment, I can't do anything for you. If you haven't worked hard, you haven't exerted the efforts, there's nothing I can do for you. And Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated this. Look at how the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conveyed the message to the men and the women the same. When the ayah came down, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Warn your close family members, Muhammad. The Messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam, he didn't say the women don't need to learn anything. Knowledge is only for men. I'm only going to speak to the men. He didn't. He specifically named them. And he said, Ya Safiyyatu Ammata Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la ugni anki min Allahi shay'a. Ya Fatimatu binta Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salini bima shi'ti la ugni anki min Allahi shay'a. He spoke to Fatima, which is his own daughter. He spoke to his auntie, Safiyya. Both of them, he said, work hard. This shows us that the women are the same when it comes to at-tahammul, taking knowledge. Another example is a woman who showed us this concept of that men and women are the same when it comes to seeking knowledge in Islam. Islam does not give preference to the men to learn and pushes the women to the side as some people try to make it look like. 
knowledge, my beloved brothers and sisters, as much as men have to learn it, women have to learn it as well. Khadija, um, when the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, now we will, I want to show you how powerful uh, this one figure, this one individual, Khadija, the Prophet's wife played in Islam. When the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam, the revelation came down on him, and he got scared, and he became frightened. He came running to his wife, Khadija. He said, لَقَدْ خَشِيتُ عَلَى نَفْسِي I'm scared for myself, he said to her. Khadija, she said to him, كَلَّا وَاللَّهِ Don't. مَا يُخْزِيكَ اللَّهُ أَبَدًا Allah will never disgrace you. إِنَّكَ لَا تَصِلُ الرَّحِمَ وَتَحْمِلُ الْكَلَّ وَتَكْسِبُ الْمَعْدُومَ وَتَقْرِئِ الضَّيْفَ وَتُعِينُ عَلَى نَوَائِبِ الْحَقِّ she said to him, Wallahi, Allah will not forsake you. Wallahi ma yukhzik Allahu abada. Allah will never disgrace you and humiliate you, Muhammad. The reason is because inna kala tasirul rahim. You keep the ties of kinship. Wa tahmilul kalla wa taksibul ma'duma. You take care of the one in need and the destituted one. You take care of their situation. You are there for those people. And you also take good care of your guests. You also take away, you also help, sorry. You also help Muhammad, those individuals who are afflicted with calamities and hardship. And then she didn't just say those comforting words to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Khadija grabbed the Prophet by the hand. She took him to Waraka Tabna Nawfali. Ibn Asad ibn Abdul Uzza ibn Ammi Khadija. It was the cousin of Khadija. She said, Come, I'll take you to someone who can help you. She helped him in two ways. She helped him morally. When the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that words, that one line to Laqad khashitu ala nafsi. She reinstalled confidence in him, alayhi salatu wasalam. The second thing she did is that she brought him a practical help. She grabbed him by the hand and she took him to her cousin and he helped the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. He told the Prophet things that helped him vision his da'wah and the direction he's going to go. One of the things that Waraqat ibn Nawfalin told him, Ibn Abdi, Ibn Asad ibn Abdul Uzza told the Prophet was that your family and your people will kick you out of Medina. And then he said to him, are my people going to really take me, drive me out of my city, Mecca? He said, yes. There is no person who has come with that which you have come with except that animosity and hate was shown to him. From that moment onwards, the Prophet realized Ibn Ishaq mentioned something very powerful. And this wallahi, brothers and sisters, especially my sisters, look at the role that a woman played in Islam. Khadija. Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Ibn Ishaq mentioned, Khadija, he said, awwala man amanat billahi wa rasuli. She's the first Muslim to have believed in Allah and his messenger. Wa saddaqat ma jaa min Allahi azza wa jalla. And she believed in that which the messenger came with, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَخَفَّفَ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Khadija believed in the Prophet when he came with the message and he told her and she believed in him. Ibn Ishaq says, فَخَفَّفَ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Allah removed from the Prophet the distress. فَكَانَ لَا يَسْمَعُ شَيْئًا The messenger never heard anything. يكرهه which he disliked من رد عليه وتكذيب the rejection and the disbelief he had فيحزنه ذلك إلا فرج الله عنه بها whatever rejection and disbelief in which he got the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would always feel comfortable because خديجة was there to give him comfort إذا رجع إليها whenever the Prophet would go to her تثبته she would ground him and she will remove 
the burden that was on him sallallahu and she will say i believe in you and she will lessen on him that which the people were were putting on the prophet والسلام, and that which they were saying about him until she passed away and the prophet felt that vacuum he felt that absent that's the role of a woman a role of a noble woman our sisters wallahi need to see this woman as their role model this is the type of person they should look up to this is a person who changed radiyallahu ta'ala anha she changed with the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam the course of history those words that she said to the prophet restored in the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam that he loved her so much that he used to take care of her friends even when she passed away he would remember her Aisha said, I never became jealous of any person the way I became jealous of Khadija. And he said, she said, I never even met her. Aisha said, I never even met Khadija. By the way, Aisha was one of the Prophet's wives. There was other women he was married to. The ones that were alive, she was more jealous of Khadija. Why? Because Khadija played that role. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. Another evidence to show that in Islam, we are, or the religion of Islam is about, this religion is about women learning, educating themselves. Abi Sa'id al Khudiri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned, Ja'at imra'atun ila Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqalat. A woman came to the Prophet. She said, Ya Rasulallahi, O Messenger of Allah, Zahabad rijalu bi hadid. The men have taken your, your, your time, your narrations, your knowledge. The men have taken that from you. فَجْعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ نَفْسِكَ يَوْمَا Make a day for us. Allocate a day for us. نَأْتِيكَ فِيهِ We will come to you. تُعَلِّمُنَا You will teach us. مِمَّا عَلَّمَكَ اللَّهِ That which Allah taught you. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم He said to them اجتمعْنَا يَوْمَ كَذَا وَكَذَا The day this, this come together. فَاجْتَمَعْنَا فَآتَاهُنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم They came together. The messenger then came فَعَلَّمَهُنَّ مِمَّا عَلَّمَهُ اللَّهِ And he taught them and he educated them that, that which Allah taught him Subhanahu wa ta'ala And one of the things that he told them was مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ إِمْرَأَةٍ There is no woman from amongst you تُقَدِّمُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا مِنْ وَلَدِهَا ثَلَاثَةً And she loses three of her children إِلَّا كَانُوا لَهَا حِجَابًا مِنَ النَّارِ Except those children will be a means or, or veiling you from the hellfire. And those children, Allah will make it if you lose three children and you show patience and endurance. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He will make for you a hijab from the hellfire if you show patience. فَقَالَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ وَثْنَيْنِ 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 A woman stood up and she said, two, 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 two. The Prophet said to her, وَثْنَيْنِ 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 Two, two, two. Even if the woman loses two children and she shows and she shows patience and endurance, that will still be a hijab for her from the hellfire. Islam is about women learning, sisters. By the way, that hadith that I just mentioned shows the women how hungry they were to learn, how eager they were to learn. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we want to learn. And that's not something the women should be embarrassed about. They should be wanting to learn and eager to learn. Umm Atiyah radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentioned. She said, Qalat, Amarana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger commanded us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an nukhrijahunna fil fitri wal adha, al awatika wal huyyada, wa dawati al khuduri. Umm Atiyah mentioned that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commanded that on the fitr and on the adha, that the women get taken out, of, the women should come out of their houses. The men and the women. The men should be taken out of their houses and the women should be taken out of their Everybody needs to leave the house. And نُقْرِجُهُنَّ فِي الْفِطْرِ وَالْأَضْحَى Everyone comes out. الْعَوَاتِقَ وَالْحُيَّضَ وَذَوَاتِ الْخُدُورِ The women who are on their menstruation, the woman that doesn't even come out, she's always in, at home. All of them need to come out. فَأَمَّا الْحُيَّضُ The Prophet said, as for the women who are on their menstruation, فَيَعْتَزِلْنَ الصَّلَاةِ They stay away from the prayer. And they sit a bit far from the place where the people are gathering. وَيَشْهَدْنَا الْخَيْرَ And they participate in the khair by listening. وَدَعْوَةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ A woman, she came, قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Umm Atiyah, she said, I, I said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِحْدَانَ لَا يَكُونُ لَهَا جِلْبَابٌ One of us doesn't have a jilbab. What should, what should she do in a situation like that? 
the prophet said little bis ha ukhtaha min jilbabiha that her sister would clothe her she will take a hijab from her sister she will borrow it bukhari and muslim both narrated why are the women commanded to come why are they instructed to come the reason they are instructed to come and everyone is instructed to come is because everyone needs to listen to the reminder everyone needs to take this knowledge it's not specific to men only women have to also come as well they also have to learn they have to hear the hadiths that the prophet is going to mention my sisters wallahi the biggest the biggest role a, a woman can play in society the biggest role that a woman can play in society is to nurture the next generation of people these great scholars of islam that you're seeing they were nurtured by mothers who were, were noble so many sisters have this ideology that i have to come out of the house i need to throw off my hijab i need to wear tight clothes i need to give reminders on youtube i need to go this wallahi i swear by allah the greatest role the greatest powerful position a woman can take is that she nurtures the next generation of scholars ibn badis rahimahullah mentions in his kitab al athar I mean, in his Athar Ibn Badis, the fourth volume, page 201, he mentioned Al Bayt, the house. Who Al Madrasatul Ula is the first school. Wal Masna'ul Asli, and it's the first factory. Litakwini Rijali that brings about men. Watadayunul Um, who were Asasu Hivri Diri Wal Hulka. And the religion of the mother is the foundation of the religion and it's the foundation of manners. A lot of these kids, wallahi, you can tell their nobility, their righteousness because of their mother. A woman who has deen and khuluq, she will nurture the next ulama, the next jahabida, the next a'immatul huda wa masabih duja. They will come from that household. A mother who, who has that. Like in the mother, if she's out and about on the street, in this ice cream place, even having ice cream, laughing, texting, whatsapping, jumping on one social media to another social media. She doesn't, she spends all day online and her children are, are, are all over the place. And he, that's not how the early women were like. Imam Shafi'i's mother, uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal's mother, um, Al Imam Malik's mother, which inshallah ta'ala we're going to mention some of these women bi'nillahi al-kareem I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me shaytan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it subhanaka allahumma bihamdi ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu how can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this youtube channel simple like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.